Hi everyone, in this video I'd like to talk about how to find the closed form solution and prove your result by induction. So here we have a recursively defined sequence. So h of n equals 1 when n equals 1 and h of n equals h of n minus 1 plus 4 times n minus 1 plus 1 when n is greater than 1. So let's write down the terms in our sequence. So first of all, when n is 1, the first term in our sequence is 1. And this is when n equals 1. Next, let's look at the case when n equals 2. So when n equals 2, I'm going to be down here on the second line of my formula. And so when n equals 2, we have h of 2 equals h of 2 minus 1 plus 4 times 2 minus 1 plus 1. So h of 2 minus 1, that's h of 1 plus 4 times, notice there's no h over here, this is just regular old multiplication, so we've got 4 times 1 plus 1. Now h of 1, we already know what that term is, we figured that out, that was actually given to us there, that's just a 1, and I have plus 4 plus 1. So the final answer for h of 2 is going to be 6, so I can put that right in here, my list of the the sequence. The sequence is a list of numbers in this case, so I'm just going to put it there in my list. In the second position, that's my h of 2 value. It's the term, it's the second term of the sequence. All right, let's do another one here. What happens when n equals 3? So when n equals 3, I'm looking at h of 3 equals h of 3 minus 1 plus 4 times 3 minus 1. I'm just following what the formula says to do, and I've plugged in n equals 3. So h of 3 equals h of 2 plus 4 times, let's see, 3 minus 1 is 2, so 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 off the back end there is a 9. So I'm looking at h of 2 plus 9. So I've got h of 2 is 6 plus 9. Final answer there is going to be 15. And if you keep going with this pro process, you'll find the next term in the sequence, when n is 4, you'll, you'll get a 28. And you'll get 45 for the fifth term. And you could keep going, but that's enough for now. Okay, so we have taken our recursively defined sequence and we have listed out the first several terms in our sequence. And so I'm briefly gonna go through the steps to find the closed form solution. So, you know, the recursively defined sequence is, is really nice, but if you wanted to figure out, you know, h of 1,000 or something, that would be a very tedious task because you're going to need to compute h of 999 plus 4 times uh, 999 plus 1. And I don't care about the multiplication, that's easy, but this term right there is going to require h of 998 and so forth. So you're going to have to do all of the terms of the sequence before you get to the 1,000th term. So, so working on your sequences recursively is a very time-consuming, labor-intensive process, and you don't want to do that if you're trying to write uh, fast algorithms, for example. So it'd be nicer to have just a little formula. I could plug in a thousand and be done with the problem. So that's why I'm looking for this closed form solution. So to do that, I'm going to find the sequence of differences. So if I subtract here a six minus one, that's going to give me five. And then I subtract a five minus six, that's going to give me nine. 
and I subtract again, and that's going to give me 13. And that's going to give me 17. And I keep on going. Uh, I didn't get a constant sequence yet, so I need to do another sequence of differences. So let's do it again. 9 minus 5 is 4. 13 minus 9 is 4. Oh, this is looking very good. So since I needed to do the second sequence of differences, that tells me I'm going to need a polynomial of degree 2. So my polynomial for the closed form solution is going to look like a quadratic expression. So that's the form I'm looking at. And I just need to go in here and figure out what is A, what is B, and what is C, and then I've got my formula. And that's lovely because I could just plug in 1,000 and figure out what the 1,000th term in the sequence is. So let's figure out how to do this. Well, using my form here, when n equals 1, I would have f of 1 equals, plugging in 1 here, I get a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. In other words, I get a plus b plus c. And I know what the first term in the sequence is. When n equals 1, I know what I have. I have 1. That's the first term value for the first term in my sequence. All right, let's do n equals 2. When n, oops, that's a typo. Should be an n. I had a in my mind. But when n equals 1, we've done that. When n equals 2, here we go. f of 2, we have a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. And if we work that out, we're going to get 4a plus 2b plus c. And that should equal 6. That's the second term in our sequence. All right, so when n equals 2, if my closed form solution is going to match up with my recursive formula, I better have this expression 4a plus 2b plus c equal, equaling 6. And we'll do uh, another one here. I've got three variables, a, b, and c, so I better have three equations and three unknowns. So let me do one more. n equals 3. When n equals 3, we have f of 3 equals a times n squared, which in this case is 3, so 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c, and I'm going to get a 9a plus 3b plus c, and that should equal 15. That's the third term in my sequence. All right, so now I've got three equations and three unknowns, and you can solve this. You can go to Symbol Lab. You can go to uh, Wolf from Alpha has an equation solver. So you have a lot of choices for how to solve that. And you could certainly do it by hand, but you know this is not a linear algebra course, so I don't expect you to, to spend all the time solving uh, while there's so many other steps to do. So I've gone over here into uh, www.symbolab.com, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my equations, a plus b plus c equals 1. My second equation was 4a plus 2b plus c equals 6. And the third equation was 9a plus 3b plus c equals 15. And I'm going to hit enter. So what's nice is Symbol Lab gives you a bunch of steps. Um, and what I'm really interested in here is the final solution. So I have A equals 2, 
B equals negative 1 and C equals 0. So let's bring that back to our handwritten work. So what we found from a symbol lab was that A equals 2, B equals negative 1, and C equals 0. So in terms of my model, which was this quadratic formula, um, I'm looking at f of n equals a times n squared. And now I know what to put in for a. a is 2. So I've got 2n squared plus b, that's going to be negative 1n plus 0. So now we've done the first part. Find the closed form solution. We did that. Check. The next thing we need to do is we need to prove our result by induction. So I'm going to make a little space for us here. I'm going to erase uh, everything except the formula so I don't forget what we found. Okay, so let's just write this up here so we have it uh, readily available. So we have f of n equals 2n squared minus n. And our goal is to prove that h of n, so this is my recursive, Sorry, my pen is getting a bit squirrely there. This is my recursive formula. I want to prove that that is equal to f of n. And f of n is my closed form solution. So, you know, the idea here is, again, I want to figure out what is the 1,000th term in my sequence. And this puppy right here, f of n, is going to be really quick. I just need to plug in n equals 1,000 and I'm done. Whereas the recursive formula, I had to do a lot of work and figure out all the 999 terms that came before it. And that's going to take me a long time. So it's really advantageous to have the closed form solution. But, you know, how do I know it's really the same? How do I know it's going to give me the same sequence? It looks like it does. I can calculate the first few terms but that doesn't prove it in general. So that's what our task is. We need to prove that this works in general. We need to prove that, that these formulas match up. To do that, I'm gonna use a proof by induction. Proof by induction has really three steps. So, the first step is going to be the basis step. And I want to show that these two formulas work for the smallest value of n. So for n equals 1, h of 1 equals 1. That's given to us in the formula. And f of n, if I crank through the formula, when n equals 1, I have 2 times 1 squared minus 1 equals 1. And so therefore, h of 1 equals f of 1. And let me make sure that this is f of 1. That's what we want right there, f of 1. OK, basis step is done. Mission accomplished. Next, hypothesis, we will assume that h of k minus 1 equals f of k minus 1. For the inductive step, we need to show that, I'll write this down, we want to show that h of k equals f of k. That's our goal. So let's start with h of k. By definition of the formula, we know that h of k equals h of k minus 1 plus 4 times k minus 1 plus 1. By the inductive hypothesis, 
we know that h of k minus 1 is f of k minus 1. So let's plug in what is f of k minus 1. f of k minus 1 would be a 2 times k minus 1 squared minus k minus 1. That's a lot of algebra to keep track of, but we can definitely do it. So let's just keep everything nice and organized. And I'll copy down all the other pieces of the formula that I already had sitting here. All right, we have a little bit of cleanup to do. So we have 2 times k squared minus 2k plus 1. So that's going to be a 2k squared minus 4k plus 2. Distributing the negative here, minus k plus 1 plus 4k minus 4 plus 1. Working all this out, we have a 2k squared. The negative 4k and the plus 4k cancel. So in terms of k, I just have negative k. And then in terms of the constants, I have positive 2, positive 1, positive 1. So that's going to be a positive 4 canceling with a negative 4. And so what I've shown is that h of k does indeed equal f of k.